All right, listen, kid. It's your first day in the big leagues, so let me give you some advice. The first thing you do when you walk in there, insult your opponent. You go right after him. No, no, no. no listen, 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 listen. Tyson, no. Look, when you go in there, you're going to want to keep your eyes shut and vision the answer. You don't want, like, a don't tell Peter. Trust me. You understand? But if you have the opportunity, nothing works like a good eye poke. Yeah. That's how you really sad no, no, your no, opponent. No, listen, listen. listen. I, mean, I know more than anyone how good you are, and you know how good you are. So just go out there, do your thing. I'll be out there to support you, but he's got me at some autograph signing session at Arby's off Sepulveda, so uh, you got this, all right? Thanks, man. Thank you. So you play your cards right, you're going to be the one doing autograph sessions at an Arby's off Sepulveda. I think it's Sepulveda. I hope I didn't send him to the wrong place, but whatever. Listen, we're going to do this. You ready, kid? Come on! Gentlemen, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. What a matchup we have here, Ken, in the world of the inner geekdom. You are a huge geek, and these two are going to look inward to become new young stars of the movie trivia showdown. It's the Dow of geekdom here. We're going inside the soul to find out how geeky you are. And I'll tell you what, I thought I was geeky at one point. I, did I wrote too. a book about Star Wars because I'm so geeky. I cannot compete in the inner geekdom because you really have to know your stuff, Mark. This is not just like, ah, oh, uh, you know, that character was a dwarf or an elf. It's like he was the fifth elf of, of the, house, the house of Rivendell on the sunset. I, I, I lose my mind. I there is a lot of canon to sort through, Ken, but with canon. these competitors here today, as you're apparently just getting handed waters left and right, I haven't gotten one all day. Mm. Andres Cabrera versus Robert Parker. Here's the the facts that we know about these two gentlemen. Combined, they weigh 140 pounds. That's true. Another point. That's true. Is it with Andres Cabrera? Look, I've known Ace, as have you, a long time. Yeah. We're big fans of Ace. He started out as an intern on the old Schmoes No Show, and now look at him. Yeah. He is part of the First Cut YouTube channel. Subscribe there right now. Check out the First Cut, and check out the Meaning of Podcast he does alongside Robert Butler III, Sabrina Ramirez, and occasionally my dog pops in. And then you look at Robert Parker, okay, mm -hmm. the spider. Now, look, I'll tell you a quick story. So yeah. I was doing some stand-up in Wisconsin. I was doing a run of colleges there because I'm okay. successful. And yeah. I was going around peddling my wares. I get off stage at one of these Wisconsin universities. Who's in the crowd? Some kid named Robert Parker. And I say, well, nice to meet you. It's always nice to meet a fan. And he says, I'm actually not a fan of your comedy at all. I despise it. But... He didn't say that. He said that he's going to be in the movie Trivia Schmodown. And I was like, well, every boy needs a dream. Turns out he actually was a high draft pick when we had the draft. This kid knows yep. magic. First pick. <laughs> Actual magic. magic. Oh, boy. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. He, he dun, lived in Gryffindor for like uh, three years. He is... The first pick in the second round for Kaiser in the dungeon. And Kaiser, uh, you know, I got my differences with Kaiser over the years, but I'll tell you what, he knows how to rally the troops. He knows how to train everybody there. And this is a big deb debut. This is, it reminds me, it's not unlike April 1989, Ken Griffey Jr. for the Seattle Mariners. Ooh. This super hyped day. What a sweet it was swing. Sweet Great swing. upper deck card. He's the kid. Kaiser used to play basketball with him. True story. Um, and and, and you, there was, on opening day, there's so much pressure on a kid like that making their debut when they're hyped. They're yeah. number one in the upper deck card set. There's a lot going on. Can you can you deliver on that pressure? I think Ace Andres Cabrera, who we know from the Meaning of Podcast. Yeah. I worked with him on Castle Talk. I uh, worked with him on Clark Jedi Council during that. Uh, Is he a big nerd? Uh, he's a big nerd. Yeah. He's got nothing to lose. He hasn't been seen around these parts since season two. He's making his return here. Ace Cabrera's got nothing to lose. He's going to come in here and take big swings. Robert Parker has a lot to lose because he's hyped. And if he loses, where's that hype go? Flutters away like some kind of convoy in Star Wars. Oh, oh. this is going to be a fun match indeed. Andres Cabrera, the most well-hydrated competitor the Schmodown has ever seen, versus Robert Parker, whose only weakness is a can of Raid. Let's take a look at their pre-match interviews right now. So I also announced, and this is something we take, because Brianne knows this name, you know this name. I don't know if you know this name, but do you know the name Robert Parker? Oh. 
Robert Parker. Robert Parker. Robert Parker. Robert Parker. Robert the Spider Parker. 2018, I said my pick for Rookie of the Year was going to be Ethan Irwin. 2019, I said it would be Kevin Smets. Choice for Rookie of the Year in 2020 is this kid. Robert Parker. Get your ass in the dungeon! Whoa. Parker! And come and get Whoa. this belt if you want! Spider. The dungeon is about to go undefeated in the inner geekdom. And bet on that, Jack. So Kaiser has it. nailed down the inner geekdom. Kaiser, lock it in. He's going to be the rookie of the year. Pretty much undefeated in yeah. all of the fan leagues. Godlike player. He, he TKO'd Smets in the fan league. Smets talks about this kid like he's a real player. This strategy is saying we're playing the long game. Parker <laughs> versus Aces will end in a bloodbath with Parker winning by second round KO. Nah, 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 nah. don't disrespect my boy Ace. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely ain't about to I don't think so. Y'all know about Ace. He a bad mother. Shut your mouth. He's like a stormtrooper, man. He ain't never miss. Stormtroopers miss, though. That, that's kind of their thing. They, they miss a lot. You know that. Bro. But boy, he's really like Superman. He ain't got no weaknesses, like none. He's got kryptonite, though. You know that, man. Kryptonite. He's gonna live forever in these rounds. Like my boy Voldemort. He ain't Never dying, not never. Voldemort dies in the last in the last movie, man. Yo, spoiler alert, what? You know, Winston Marshall may be a big deal at Santa Fe Wonderfest, but here in the movie trivia schmodown, buddy, you can drip drip on this, because your boy Ace is about to get knocked out. That's Robert Parker. That's Robert Parker. I'm here to deliver a message. Not on behalf of Kaiser, but on behalf of the entire dungeon. I'm here to take this division by storm. That's a lot of pressure. If Parker comes in there with all this hype around him and Ace wins that, yeah. Parker's on the shelf. All right, you see, I, I got nothing bad to say about Winston and Ace, but I stand by those things and thank you, Mr. Kaiser, for taking a chance on me. Take a chance my ass. This kid Ace is about to get whooped. He's here to have fun. He's got nothing to lose. Just have fun, baby. Bro, I'm here to have fun. I got nothing to lose. He's got all the pressure. I'm just here to show up have fun, smile, and if I if I beat him, then that's just bonus points for me, man. Go have fun, my dude. You ready? You ready for this? Hey, drip, drip, baby, drip, drip. Let's see how this shakes out, kids. All right, Ken, you see there, look, I, I like what I'm seeing. I like the moxie I'm seeing from yep. these two young men. Their combined age is 24, That's and true. I think that they're ready to compete here today. I have gray hairs in my beard, older than both of them. But here's the thing. <laughs> Uh, we speak a lot about Kaiser, but you can see right there, Winston Marshall. Yeah. Winston Marshall, Team Swag, swag Squad. Uh, I, I think you can accomplish a lot with Winston in your corner, and Andres Cabrera has someone in his corner who can get him over the edge. This is going to be great here. Uh, strengths uh, coming into this. I know Andres Cabrera, his strengths include uh, Star Wars, uh, Harry Potter, and, uh, of course, making Robert Butler III laugh during podcasts. <laughs> oh, and what a sweet laugh it is. And as far as Robert Parker goes, the guy knows his MCU films, he knows his Harry Potter movies, and he knows how to get a great deal on a huge cheese log because he's from Wisconsin. All right. You ready? I'm ready. You feeling sir. it? I'm feeling it. It's time it. for the movie trivia schmodown. <laughs> Good throaty crowd here today, Ken. Handling the introductions will be you. I'm ready for the golden throat. All right. That is also the name of one of my movies. All right. <laughs> dink, dink. Introducing first. Accompanied by his manager, Winston Marshall, making his inner geekdom debut and representing Swag Squad. This is... Andres Ace Cabrera! Oh, yeah. Winston Marshall, Robert Butler the third. There he is, Jagger the Chosen. He's got the, he's got the Potter glasses on. Are those Potter glasses? Potter glasses. 
Look at this, this team is ready to go. They're buoyant, they're jubilant, they're dancing around. Winston Marshall dressed as a character whose power is well over 9,000. I love it. I'm Look, at it. Look, I don't, Winston. In some cannons, 10,000. He's kind of Andres Cabrera with the glasses on. I'll tell you what, Andres is the guy that you want to swipe right on life. I'm telling you, man. Look at that guy up there. Look at him. Is Look there a him. life app where you go get dating? Yeah, just app in life. People should swipe right on Andres. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, here we go. We don't know if he's single, ladies, but if he is, it's your lucky day. All right. Have you, have you seen that water jug? He is. Here we go. <laughs> and his opponent, accompanied by his manager, Kaiser, representing the dungeon and making his inner geekdom debut. This is Robert the Spider. comes out. That's even well dressed for Geyser and the Spider. All business. He's walking all around the studio. He's getting the feel for it. This is his first time here. He's got a timepiece on. Is that a pocket watch? He's got a pocket pocket watch. Oh, he's taking the jacket off. Look at this. Look at this. All right. Look at Kaiser. Wow. Kaiser dressed dressed like he's going around the neighborhood collecting money for the mob and flower shops. That's right. Robert Parker. Dressed in the nights, Kaiser dressed like a street tough in the film The Rocketeer. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have Robert Parker set as he All gets right. his cufflinks ready. Andres Cabrera, ace always ready to go. Gentlemen, this is your first time on this stage of the movie trivia schmodown inner geekdom. So I will read the rules of play for each round. In round number one, it's a contest of knowledge with a point valued at each question. Ten questions total in round number one. They come from ten different corners of the movie Trivia Schmodown, Inner Geekdom Galaxy. Like I said, each question, it's worth a point. If you miss it, it's fine. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. We're going to ask the question up here at the answer desk. As soon as we ask it, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Try to spell as best you can. Try to be as legible as you can. Once we address you by name, that's your cue to show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt at an answer into the microphone. It's a three round match, gentlemen. You each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. So if you didn't hear a question right, you wanna buy yourself another 15 seconds, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match. You didn't like the way a question was asked, you think maybe your competitor didn't get the right answer, use a challenge. And I think that's it for the rules. So, uh, Robert the Spider Parker, it's your first time on this platform. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Andres Ace Cabrera, it's good to see you, sir. We've been buddies a long time. How does this stage feel to you? I, I feel good. I'm, I'm here to have fun, man. I'm here to have fun and smile and show off my inner nerd. So. Yeah. <laughs> Ken, I, I feel like you and I are more nervous than these two gentlemen. Uh, look, I'll tell you what, uh, you, this is this is a lot, lot riding on this for these two gentlemen here, but I like Andres's attitude of having fun. All right, you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. Then there's only one thing left to say. Let's get ready to schmodown! Three rounds to a finish. Three rounds to a finish. Did I not say uh, that I right? Know, I don't know. Some, I think some, I said it right. Some dad of two is laughing at me back there. That's um, right. Grandpa Harloff has been nipping on the cough medicine for quite some time. Uh, your first question comes in the world of the DCEU. We're still calling it that. The DCEU, your question. Who plays the character of Shazam in Shazam? I'll tell you what. Do you hear I put an exclamation point? You did. On that? I Shazam! Like you did that really well. Sounds, Sounds like a cleaner. It does. We're going to need an answer here five. in five. Four, three, three two, two, one. one. Pens down, uh, Robert Parker. Zachary Levi. That is That's correct. correct. <laughs> With an exclamation point, does Ace have it? Zachary Levi. Yes, he does. They're on the board. You just need to get that first answer out. That's right. Get all the nerves out of there. On to the whiteboard. All right, all right. Your second question out of 10 in this first round comes in the category of Star Wars. Star yeah. Wars. Aside from Luke Skywalker, who else ignited Luke's green bladed lightsaber? All if right. I had a lightsaber, I'd let everyone ignite it. If I had a lightsaber. <laughs> I no? Okay. Yeah. Five. 
four. Imagine having one like three, in your college dorm room. Two. One. I did. That's why I was single. All right. First, <laughs> first question. Uh, first answer coming in from Ace. Darth Vader? That's correct for a point. Vader. That is no, correct. Vader. 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 All right. Next All right. question. All right. Next question. Is in the realm of Middle Earth, where Ken spends his summers. <laughs> Your question. What is the name of the giant spider that attacks Frodo and Sam in The Return of the King? Mm, <laughs> the yeah. spider had a name? <laughs> it had a name. It had an ethos. It had a point wow. of view. Yeah. This is my spider, Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Five, four, three. Two and one. Pens are down. Pens are down. Need an answer starting with Robert. Shelob. Shelob is correct. Ace. Ace. I said Aragog, but that's wrong. Aragog, so. no, but if I had a spider, I would name it Aragog. Uh, Aragog sounds So Robert Parker takes great. his first lead of all time. First lead. Still first perfect. lead here. All right. Gentlemen, your fourth question comes in the category of DC. DC. Who played the man posing as Ra's al Ghul at the beginning of Batman Begins? Uh, you mentioned uh, D.C. When yeah. we went to uh, D.C., what oh, was your yeah. favorite place to eat? You my, remember? My favorite place to eat Washington, D.C. was when I asked for a second bag of peanuts on the flight in. It was uh, also Copster's uh, cheeseburgers at 4 in the morning. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Pens down. Going to you first. Ace, what do you got? Uh, Ken Watanabe. That Nailed is it. correct. Robert. Ken Watanabe. All, All right. right. All right, Robert Parker still perfect. Ace right behind him with three points. Your next category is in the world of Marvel movies. I didn't say MCU, I said Marvel movies, so these could be anything. In the film <laughs> X-Men Days of Future Past, what government building does Magneto surround with a baseball stadium? All right, I'll tell you what, Days of Future Past, also a great Moody Blues album. We're not, we're not, we're not doing is it really a Moody Blues? music trivia show. What's on there? Ride My Seesaw? Probably. Perhaps? Five. The Voice? Four. Your wildest Three, dreams? Two Just and a singer one. in a rock and roll band? <laughs> you know them. Uh, we're looking for answers, starting with rubber. The White House. White House is correct, yes. The White House. All right, there it is. There it is. All right, Ace is in the place. Ace is in the place, keeping uh, pace here. Uh, Rob's got a 5-4 lead. This is the sixth question, gentlemen. It's in the category of Harry Potter. Harry Potter. What was the name of the Defense Against the Dark Arts professor in The Sorcerer's Stone? You know, you I'm, not a, I'm not a boy wizard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sounds like an important class. Uh, I wouldn't want to skip out on that one. Yeah. Too, uh, oh, I slept out with through Hagrid. Defense Against the Dark Arts again. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. We need pens down. Pens down, Ace. All right. We're going to start with Ace. Gilroy Lockhart. That's incorrect. Quirrell. That yes, it is, is correct. Professor Quirrell. All right, a little bit of a lead, a little bit of a lead. All right, six to four. Robert leads Andres. The spider leads Ace. Your next category is in the world of Star Trek. Star Trek. And the question is, which Star Trek movie was directed by William Shatner? There we go. I call him Bill. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Priceline.com. <laughs> T.J. Hooker. TV's T.J. Hooker. Five, and the Twilight Zone. Four. It's great in the Twilight three, Zone. Three, two, and one. Pens down, pens down. We need an answer. We're starting with Robert. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Uh, that is correct. Ace. Ace. I said Undiscovered Country. All mm. right. That, that was Star Trek VI. That would be wrong. One right. movie off. Parker, Robert. Spider trying to He's put trying. some distance between him and Ace. That's right. Uh, all right, your eighth question. You're going to get 10 in this round, but this one uh, comes in the category of MCU. That's Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's guys. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. <laughs> Who were the last two surviving characters on Titan at the end of Infinity War? Whoo. Okay. Bit of a that. spoiler in there, huh? Oh, yeah. All right. Infinity War, that's a, that's a movie about the cars, uh, the Infinity, right? I had, I had an I-30. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, and one. Pens are down. Looking for answers, starting with Me? Ace. Iron Man and Nebula. That's correct. Robert? Tony and Nebula. Yeah. Well, we'll accept that as well. Take that. <laughs> All right. Eight to five. Mm -hmm. Both gentlemen answering so many questions correct, we want to remind you to occasionally go outside. <laughs>
Your penultimate question in round number one comes in the category of heroes and villains. Could be a hero, could be a villain. The question is, who provides the voice of Miguel O'Hara, also known as Spider-Man 2099, in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Have you seen that movie, Ken? You would enjoy it. Uh, I I'm have telling you. not. I have not. Treat yourself. Um, yeah, I, I I'm don't, telling uh, these guys to get out of the house. You need to stay in the house uh, and watch that movie. That's true. That's true. I go to patios a lot. Five, four. Are we on tonight? Three, oh, two, one. All right, pens are down. We need answers starting from Robert. Oscar Isaac. That is correct for a point. Does Andres have it? Oscar Isaac. Yes, he does. All right, there we go. Yes, he does. All right. Both gentlemen playing very well, and Robert the Spider Parker on the verge of a perfect game in his very first match. If right. you can get this last question right, Ken, it's all up to you. Do you feel nervous? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't. I should probably. But all right. Uh, question ten, final one comes in the category of mixed bag. Mixed bag. This could be anything, basically. What country does the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom predominantly take place in? Did you say the Indiana Jones? Uh, it was, it was it written was that written way. That way and but I it just kind of Ron Burgundy did. But uh, <laughs> you kids like the Indiana yeah, Jones? All uh, right, so go put yourself, San Diego. Here we go. <laughs> Coming down in five. A La Jolla man four, clings to life. Three, two, one. Pens are down. We need answers starting with Ace. Uh, India. Oh, uh, that is correct. Nailed it. Yeah. India. All yeah, right, as well. Program. That is impressive. Mm -hmm. That is impressive. Uh, and it is so cool to see the managers. Winston very excited about Ace's performance and yeah. Kaiser cheering on Robert Parker like Kaiser is the father who's just now come back into his life that <laughs> Robert Parker has money to lend him. <laughs> Robert, you got a perfect round number one. <laughs> Ten points, and now you get a bonus question. As Jesse, you don't have to write this one down. Just answer it whenever you feel ready within 15 seconds. Is Kaiser the Fred Lennon of movie <laughs> trivia showdown? Nice. Okay. Hey, remember me? I'm your pops. Mm -hmm. Robert, your question. Who played Adam Frankenstein in the graphic novel-based film I, Frankenstein? Aaron Eckhart. <laughs> he called him Adam Eck That's great. You are correct. Right. For a point. 11 oh, to 7. All right. Hi, I'm Adam Frankenstein. Pleased <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> Oh, All right, 11 I'm 7 going in the second round. A lot of here. points here, Ken. Look, Parker is showing, uh, hey, this is what, uh, why, he was, uh, why he was in here, uh, why he was so, so heralded before he made his debut here. Yeah. Uh, perfect round, and, and, and the 10 question perfect round. So Living up to the hype, nary yep. a sweat. Nary a sweat, indeed. Uh, Andres Cabrera had a good showing, too. 7 out of 10, ain't bad. But that uh, might not get you the victory if you keep that pace. He's got to step it up into round number two. But Winston's on the desk right now, giving him some good advice, talking up to him. Kaiser's going up to him, wearing a jacket that most baseball card owners had in 1987. <laughs> um, and trying to talk to him as well. So uh, we'll see. Round number two, though, the wheel round. Make a break. Here we go in the wheel round. The rules of play for round number two, known as the wheel round. The wheel provided by Alex Marzonia. All right, Marzonia. Check out Marzonia. Marzonia. On Spotify. <laughs> On that wheel, you're going to see 12 slices. You have spinner's choice and opponent's choice, and then 10 different categories of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Once you settle on a category, because this is inner geekdom, you're going to hear five questions from said genre of film. Each question's worth two points. There is no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer, we promise. At that point, the value of the question goes down to a mere point. So Robert Parker, you're sitting in the higher ranked chair, and deservedly so, after your first round perfect performance. You find yourself in a four point lead, 11 to seven over ace. Would you like to spin first or defer to your opponent? We got time, we'll defer. All right, he's got the pocket watch to prove it. Really? Andres? Woo. Make sure you take a sip of water. Um, Andres Ace Cabrera rocking those nice kicks there. English, Looking do you speak it? Right. He is going to give it a spin. Have at it. There it is. Spin is in. Spin is in. Good spin in. for Ace. Ken, what I love about Ace's manager, Winston Marshall, is he's mm. actually wearing that costume out to the bar tonight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty much just his outfit. And, he's uh, drinking his Goku. I get that reference. I don't understand it, but I get it. All right, we're coming down to Star Trek. <laughs> Ace, not happy with that spin. 
That looked like <laughs> kid wears the emotions on his face, doesn't he, Ken? <laughs> looked like my dad. <laughs> looked like my dad being told he's got a vegan meal coming. <laughs> All right, spin again, spin again. All right, here it comes again. Coming around. You got a good crowd. Oh, this was a hot ticket today. It was a, big, a lot, lot of people of, it sold out early on Ticketmaster. Wanted Ticket to Master, see this yeah. one. Two young stars of the Intergeekdom League. Uh, yeah, mostly they just uh, showing up here for Ace's jacket. Um, He's the Oscar that's, Isaac that's of jacket be. wearers in my life. That jacket, I, I yeah. dropped 200 easy on that jacket. Oh, easily, easily, easily. He's past this opponent's choice, so that's the good news. <laughs> Wizarding World? Going. He got the Wizarding this is what he wants. World. This is what he wants. All right. I got you. This is what he wants. The here. Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Time permitting, John Rocha. Um, Ace, <laughs> you selected uh, Harry Potter because that's what you spun, the Wizarding World of that guy. Your question, first of five in this round. Who physically plays Grip Hook, the goblin that lets Harry into his money vault in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? And I can just say these. I don't have to write it, right? Uh, you can say the answer or ask for multiple choice. Your option. Okay. Got it. Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. I can provide that. Is it A, Warwick Davis? B, Peter Dinklage, C, Kenny Baker, or D, Vern Troyer? Warwick Davis. That is incorrect. Robert, I'm going to give you your options, and then you can wager a guess. Is it A, Warwick Davis, B, Peter Dinklage, C, Kenny Baker, or D, Vern Troyer? D, Vern Troyer. That is correct for the for steal. steal. Who physically plays it. Yeah. Who physically plays uh, it. Fun fact out there, Warwick Davis actually does the voice Boys. and plays him in Deathly Hallows, mm -hmm. but Vern mm -hmm. Troyer in Sorcerer's Stone. All right. Your next question, Andres, second of five. What type of quill does Rita Skeeter use when interviewing the Triwizard Tournament champions in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? Multiple choice. Is it A, the Peacock Writer Quill, B, the Auto Answer Quill, C, the Smart Answer Quill, or D, the Quick Quotes Quill? Can I hear the choices without uh, you can You can once, yes. Time, okay. Is it A, the Peacock Writer Quill, B, the Auto Answer Quill, C, the Smart Answer Quill, or D, the Quick Quotes Quill? Quick Quotes Quill? Isn't it fun to say? It's a point. You get a point for it. There we go. Pulls it in four. He's got three more. He could take a lead. He could take a lead. That's right. He, he has three, three questions left in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Andres, your third question. What is the name of the Weasley's old gray owl? Five. Four. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Is it A, Errol, B, Pigwidgeon, C, Hermes, or D, Harold? I'm going to ask you for the answers again. A through, can I do that? That's going to be a JTE rule. Oh, it we'll is. Do it again. Yeah. Five, okay. four, oh. three. You want to use it? Two. No, Harold. Yeah, yes. Uh, you said. You said. I said Harold. Harold. Yeah. That is incorrect. Incorrect. Oh, okay. Is it A. Errol, B. Pigwidgeon, C. Hermes, or D. Harold? A. Errol. It is in fact Errol for a uh, point. Uh, it's a fair challenge. That's true. All right, so uh, challenge on the board is that maybe the announcer, in this case me, gave away a little bit too much of the hand of what the answer could have been. So we will review the challenge and be right back with our ruling. All right, we are back. And after a three-hour deliberation, no. it has been determined that the announcer, in this case, <laughs> Baby Carrots Mark Ellis, coming to your city soon, did in fact show the hand a little bit and maybe give Robert Parker an easier time with the multiple choice. So the solution is to ask Robert Parker another question and provide multiple choice for that if he could get a one point steal. So Robert, your question, and I'm gonna give you all your multiple choice options. You may not elect to answer the two point version. Which Horcrux was destroyed during the events of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Is it A, Tom Riddle's mother's ring? B, Helga Hufflepuff's cup, 
C, Tom Riddle's Diary, or D, The Diadem of Ravenclaw? Tom Riddle's Diary. I don't know what I just said, but he's right. That he's is right. one point. Steal. And that's a steal. Two more in the round. It's, yeah. it's, it's the risky run, Ken. If you select a wedge that maybe your opponent knows as well, they can yep. pick up some steals. That's what we see happening. However, mm -hmm. Andre still well within his reach to pull to within one yep. of Robert Park. He, uh, he has two more here. Two more left. Ace, your penultimate question in the wizarding world. How many years had Professor Trelawney been teaching at Hogwarts when Dolores Umbridge had her fired in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix? Five, four, three. Can you repeat the question? Two. Again, JT rule. How many years had Professor Trelawney been teaching at Hogwarts when Dolores Umbridge had her fired in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix? I'm just going to go. I know it, but I, I want to make sure. Multiple choice. Okay. Is it Smart A, 16 play. years? B, 15 years, C, 13 years, or D, 11 years? Five, four, 15 years. Three. That is incorrect, Robert, for a steal. Is it A, 16 years, B, 15 years, C, 13 years, or D, 11 years? A, 16 years. That's another steal another for steal. Robert Parker. Another steal. A lot Four of thievery teammates. going on, and he finds himself with a six-point yep. advantage, and he hasn't spun the wheel yet, Ken. One more question Yep. for Andres Cabrera. In the world of the Wizarding World, for two points, the query is, what is the name of the location wherein the mysterious and shady Borgen and Burks can be found? Multiple choice. Five. Is it A, Diagon Alley, B, Nocturne Alley, C, Dragon Alley, or D, Zonko's Alley? A. A is incorrect. Robert, for another one-point steal, is it A, Diagon Alley, B, Nocturne Alley, C, Dragon Alley, or D, Zonko's Alley? Nocturne Alley. That's another steal for another Robert steal. Parker, All Ken. Right. A lot of thievery okay. for the spider. And now his eight legs are going to go up to that wheel and spin. He has yep. a seven-point lead right now, and we're looking at a possible knockout if he gets a category that he likes. The kid has lived up to the promise so far. Robert, at you ready, yeah. you may step up to the wheel. Yeah, we are on the cusp of a, of a TKO <laughs> as well. Looking out for that. Uh, it could be a uh, KO. could be a TKO. TKO we're going to have to do some math, possibly. Yeah. yeah, I hate doing the math, but... That's right. Robert Parker, his very first spin. Swinging it, swinging it yeah. from the left side there. In the schmodown. Meanwhile, Lefty. Kaiser dressed like a guy who's trying to sell him the wheel. <laughs> Kaiser will put you in that Cadillac and then steal it back. Cool. Uh, we're rolling around. Ken, he could have spun Spinner's oh, Choice. Spinner's I choice. don't believe this. It goes Already there. a seven-point oh, advantage. Already. Looking good. He has spun Spinner's Choice <laughs> with his very first spin in the schmodown. How about that look? And he's going to select Middle, Middle Earth. Earth. Oh, Middle Earth. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's hope we can say all these names and words correctly. <laughs> That's why you are asking these questions. Now, yes. the margin of victory one would need um, is 10 points in order to score a knockout. It would actually be 11 points. If yep. Ace finds himself trailing by 10 points or less, he is still mathematically not eliminated. We will go yep. to round number three. Keep in mind, Robert can get above 10 points in his lead mm -hmm. and not knock Ace out because there is the possibility of stealing That's for these true. five questions. All right, you're going to get five questions. First one in. This is a category of Middle Earth. What does Aragorn discover among the remains from the battle between the Urukai and Rohirrim that leads him to believe Merry and Pippin might be dead? One of their belts. That'll work. Uh, there we go. Yep. Sorry. See it. Sorry. That'll Sorry. Yeah, that's good. You good. You got it. Two points. Two points. There was uh, there was notes down there. I hadn't. There was read a the lot notes. of reading. It's tough to pronounce all that stuff. All right. Second question out of five here, and this is a key one here. The wizard Radagast has what living under his cap? A bird nest. 
two more points. All right, that's right. I believe uh, Kaiser also has birds living yeah. under his cap. All right, we are, we are in, in that range. You let me know. All right, so it is 19 to 8. Uh, Ace not mathematically eliminated yet, still in it, and he's got to be prepared because if that steal comes, he's going to need to take advantage if he wants to move on to round number three. All right. Third question. What is the name of the great hall in Edoras that the king of Rohan rule from? The Golden Hall of Meduseld. That is two points there. All right. All right. And Ken, now we find ourselves at that moment. If Robert yeah. Parker can answer this question correctly, he will have knocked out mm -hmm. Andres Ace Cabrera in round number two. All right. Fourth question. In the desolation of Smaug, what kind of light revealed the secret entrance to Lonely Mountain? Moonlight. It's your winner! By way of knockout, Robert the Spider Parker. Moonlight is it indeed. It is Moonlight, Ken. I have a feeling Robert has seen those films once or twice, yes. and it is a 23 to 8 victory. Robert Parker living up to the height, living up to how well dressed he was entering yeah. the competition studio here today. The white lot, uh, did, this probably did not bother him at all. Yeah. Um, Andres did not get into his head, nor did Winston Marshall, but I will say this about Andres. Look, the kid ran into a buzzsaw today. He proved he has a wealth of knowledge in the inner geekdom, but Robert Parker, that kid, yeah. may be next level. Look, he was heralded. This is the reason why. Kaiser's very happy, though a court-appointed mediator will be returning Robert to his mother. Um, <laughs> and uh, the, the dungeon keeps rolling on, man. Uh, Kaiser, though, you got to give him all the credit in the world. Drafted a great team. He drafted him early, and a lot of people had question marks because as highly talented as you could possibly be, you just there's the unknown factor, and Kaiser did go out on that limb. He went out on the branch. He took a mm -hmm. risk, and the branch did not crumble under the weight. Nay, it, it proved it was a mighty oak. Mm -hmm. And now we join the winner, Robert the Spider Parker, his manager, Dr. Toothpick, and Jen Sturger. Stop, Ellis. You're killing me. <laughs> Kaiser, this is an amazing performance for his first time out the gate. And a lot of people, I think, were doubting Robert Parker. And your choice to pick him so early in the draft, what do you have to say to those people? Boy, Kaiser's so stupid. He picked a kid who didn't miss a freaking question the entire game. Boy, I must really not know what I'm doing. You know what's going to happen? We're going to keep racking up points in the IG. We're going to murder this division. The dungeon isn't going to lose a match in IG, so everyone better get out their VHS tapes and blow off the dust, get ready, watch what you got to watch, because the spider's coming for more action. I have to ask you, do you feel like you lived up to the hype? I mean, I think so. <laughs> I guess we'll see what everybody else thinks, but yeah, I, I feel really good about how I played today. I got to give lots of love to both Kaiser for drafting me and Smets, a good buddy for who's helped me out during this time. So yeah, he wasn't able to be here today, unfortunately, but man, he, he's a big help. Do you feel like having all that hype around you put a lot of pressure on yourself to get the victory today? It was more motivation than pressure, because I knew what I was capable of, and it was just really me saying to myself, I need to rise to this occasion and actually make it happen, and I did. Uh, don't you think it's a little bit conflict of interest, though, Kaiser, that you have Parker and Smets on your team? Because let's face it, we haven't seen this dominant of a performance since Smets. Where do you get these questions from? <laughs> Are you trying to start something? Just trying to start, start some static? I'm just saying it might be a conflict of interest, no? No, winning is not a conflict. We're going to win, win, win. As long as belts stay in the dungeon, it's a good year for us. So. I got two beasts. They couldn't be more hungry. Smets had them up at 2.30 in the morning and feeding them Captain Crunch and hamburger, quizzing them on the Lord of the, the, the Middle Earth or whatever it is. And so, you know, we got him ready. And he, and he, he, there's no hype with a guy who never misses a question. He's a lethal, lethal man. So I guess the next obvious question is, who do you want next? You want to answer this? It's a good question. Uh, whoever thinks that they can step to the dungeon, I'm ready to take them on. So nobody. <laughs> oh, Kaiser. I love you and hate you in the same breath. Back to you guys. All right, Ken. Kaiser getting a free shirt from a Peaky Blinders production in yeah. his neighborhood. Yeah, and uh, 
Someone hand Jen some hand sanitizer right now. <laughs> Poor Jen's got to shake that guy's hand way too much. Yeah, all right. Uh, back to Jen right now with the uh, losing competitor today, who I still think should hold his head up high. Andres Ace Cabrera, Winston Marshall, Robert Butler III. Jen, take it away. Wait, what? I'm sorry. They're bringing props, guys. No, um, it's, it's fine. I mean, this is very standard. If you're not already doing so, you should listen to the Meaning of podcast with my boy RB3 here and my boy Ace, who had a great match. Honestly, that was a great first match, man. I mean, again, people are saying this kid is the second coming of, like, you know, Nerd Jesus. So, like, I, I you know, he dresses old school like he is the second coming of Nerd Jesus, so I get it. Uh, he had an incredible match. He knew the name of a spider. I don't have time to figure out spiders' names. I kill them. I just, not, not, oh, that's his nickname. I didn't mean that. I meant, like, actual little spiders that be in your house, be biting you and be giving you giant welts. I'm going to stop talking now and let Ace talk because I put my foot in my mouth. And I didn't really mean to do that. So, uh, yeah. I was like, that spider had a family, man. Come on. <laughs> Oh, Andres, I know that you were probably disappointed in the fact yeah. that you lost, but to be fair, you basically, that was a Mack truck that you were out there against. It, it was, and unfortunately I still wanted to do better, and I knew I could have done better. I, I know Harry Potter better than what I showed, and I just happened to get questions that I didn't know, which is disappointing. And then once he had a point in his choice and he got Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth, I was like, all right, this is this is game, set, match, it's it's done. And, and I, I'm... I'm, I'm, if I lose to anyone, it's leases to him. I'm happy I lost to him. I actually like the kid quite a bit. So, there you go. God, kayfabe. You gotta get a real descent, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you had to be feeling a little bit beaten down when he started getting all those deals. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Because <laughs> I, I thought if I had multiple choice, I would have had a shot. Did you know those answers? And they and like the lights got to you? Because look, this is your debut. I mean, that happens to a lot of people. Yeah, I, I actually didn't think I would get nervous, but I did get a little bit nervous. And unfortunately, I think if I got a second chance, I would actually show a little bit better. But the lights did get to me quite a bit because I, I thought I prepped enough, but apparently, apparently not enough. Apparently not enough. Also, this guy's literally a magician. Like he, Harry Potter. Yeah, that, that's that, that was the easiest category. It's like him landing on opponent's choice. Like I mean, yeah. we, you, you did your best days. I know what a bad uh, Will Spin would do to you. So you know that's. Yeah. And I, look, I'm gonna say real talk. This is my fault, man. Because the last time I wore this during the Geek to Match, I got TKO'd. So that's my fault. I apologize. We will never see Goku in this place ever again. But Bloku, Black Goku is done. All right, we 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 done with that. Bloku. <laughs> Oh, thank God for that. I was wondering what was going on there. <laughs> so what's next, guys? We're going to keep rolling? We're going to keep doing this Inner Geekdom thing? Yeah, I'm down. I want to do another match. I feel like give me a little bit more time. I can prep. I can learn. This is my first time in the ring. So if I get a second chance, I feel like I can improve. So I want to improve, and I want to face off against somebody. Is there anyone in particular that you're looking for? It's someone that's not Robert Parker. <laughs> yeah. I think you speak for a lot of inner geekdom com competitors now uh, after seeing what just happened out there. But I'm sorry about your loss today, guys. How oh, good. But not the end of swag. Yeah, not, not, not at all. Drip, drip, baby, all day. And you're always a class act, Jen. Thank you so much for, uh, for you know, having us out here. I tried. Drip, drip. Drip, drip. drip, drip. You, you, you want to do it with me this time? Drip, you wanna, you wanna, How do I do it? You just, you okay, wait. Uh, oh, no. Yes. I, I can't. Come on, come on girl. Just no, it. it's. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. That was my face. All right, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ken. Well, right. who would have thought Ace turning heel? I hope we can edit that interview out. A lot of four-letter uh, words not meant for the kiddies' ears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, it's such a nice guy. And, what a great uh, kid. They're, they're chatting, chatting drip, drip like they're my doctor explaining my prostate problems to me. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, they've got, got a good team over there right now. And I, this is why I really do love and respect Ace as a commentator in this movie world, the meaning of podcast with him, RB3, Sabrina. It's, it's really great content. Uh, and I know because of the, I know that show, I know Ace has the mind. He can get back in the training room, uh, kind of try out and come back. But Robert Parker, the spider. Man, like what said up top, sometimes you hear, so-and-so is coming. They're bringing all this uh, resume uh, to, to the game, and, and, and then they don't come through. And then this was a case of, yep, it's as advertised. That's right. Uh, both gentlemen, inspiring young minds, uh, really have such positive energy. It's nice to have them around the studio. It's nice to have that, that youthful exuberance in, in victory or in defeat. Mm -hmm. Nice to see Robert Parker, the spider, and Andres Cabrera ace compete here today on the field of movie trivia battle. Ken, mm -hmm. the last word goes to you. What does it feel like to watch these two young bucks just enter 
the prime of their life. <laughs> it makes me tired because I need a nap, but they're both uh, great, and the future of the Inner Geeks division is actually better than it's ever been. We have had legends in this division before, but now we have a robust roster of competitors. More questions, more Inner Geekdom coming your way, and Robert's a magician, they say? He, he can actually perform magic tricks. I've seen it, okay. and I've been amazed. I've been horrified. The I, kid can bend spoons. Pigeons come from I'm orifices. You did not know a pigeon could live. Yeah, I'm going to try to get him to turn my cam into at least a Hyundai. We're going to go in the backyard and figure that one out. You can open for me a couple more gigs. We'll see what that payment looks like. And, you know, Ken, we like to do this every so often. Everybody in the studio, how about a big hand for our crew here working so hard today? That's the best crew in the biz. You got Adam Smith there in the booth. You got Robert Butler the third, mm -hmm. not only advertising his podcast, The Meaning Of, but also helping us with the cameras. You yeah, got Alex Marzonia, uh, Brandon Hanna, Dwayne Burke, uh, Joey Moda, everybody else running around. Uh, Megan Sanborn. There's so many great people here yep. today. And you, the viewer, another great person. Maybe I'm assuming a little bit too much, but I think you're at least think a good, good human being. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching us and maybe supporting our patron, the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon. Select which tier is right for you today. And Ken, they can go to the SchmodownLive.com for upcoming live event tickets and all the stats and information your brain can handle. That's right. As Vince Scully would say, it's time for all the pregame and postgame stats and stories. Goodbye. Over on Schmodown Live. For now, Cubs win. Cubs win. That's Harry Carey.